Hello everyone. Oh, now we're facing the wrong way. Good grief. You can see my crooked picture back there. Hello everyone. Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. Um, Monday, February 21st. Apologize for being just a few minutes late here. Um, actually was right on time. Turns out I was on the wrong page. <clears throat> so, yep, it happens. Anyhow, I'm just making sure I've got my iPad going and that I have all my ringers off here. I am appreciative of everybody who's joining me tonight. Uh, I apologize for not being here last week. I came down with just a really nasty head cold and um, didn't test. I was negative for COVID. That wasn't the issue, but it just left me really, really tired. And for those of you who know me, um, I also have my cough, which is going to be present tonight too when I start talking too much. So you may hear me sucking on a you know, taking a quick drink of water or sucking on a, a root beer barrel just to keep me from coughing too much throughout the video. Keeping my fingers crossed I can get through it. I hope everybody had a really good week. Um, we had a couple pretty busy weeks here. Sarah did get moved out and into our apartment. And Friday night we brought Luna over to make the big move. And um, she was pretty clingy for a couple days but has settled in quite nicely to her space. She's got a great window perch, so she's able to watch squirrels and things like that. So for the first time in as long as I can remember almost, um, we're down to one cat and one dog at our house. It's pretty quiet. And um, Angel was here helping me earlier, but I think she's gone upstairs and actually shut Loki out of the basement this time because I did not want him playing ball with me while we were on this live. So, um, we got Sarah moved out. We have started kind of putting our house back together. I can access the last of the boxes from the great remodel project. So I'm hoping that, <coughs> excuse me, in the next week or two, we can get that stuff taken care of. Hi, April. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing tonight? Hope everything's going well. Um, kind of spent the weekend just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning and getting life back in order. And, oh, did get to see Cece for a little bit too yesterday, so that was a fun treat. Anyhow, that's my world. Hope things have been going well for you guys. I am going to flip the camera over. Apologize for any shakiness that occurs. And we will get started on the card I've got to share with you tonight. Just a moment, please. <clears throat> Apologize for all the shaking. April, I'm doing good. Feeling much better than I did last weekend and or last week and um kind of relieved. It doesn't sound like we're supposed to be well, they've been talking for I don't know, four or five days about this big storm that we're supposed to be getting with snow and it's gone anywhere from we could get ten inches of snow to um, four inches of snow to maybe it's all going to go north of us. Just all sorts of craziness. Apologize here. I'm trying to get my camera straightened out. I had to figure out this whole flipping thing around sort of stuff. So we're just going <clears> to, <throat> we might be a little cockeyed tonight while I get used to it, but we'll get there. Um, and right now it sounds like thankfully we may only get about four inches of snow. So for that, I am grateful. And, um, Okay, that's going to drive me nuts having me this crooked. Let's just see. Oh, there we go. All right, I'm not going to touch anything else now. Anyhow, it sounds like we may get miss most of that snow too, which makes me happy. All righty. I um, actually had an event with Susan, who is the person I signed up for, or signed up under. And um, we had a, a mystery card challenge put in front of us Um for this event when basically we were just told what papers we needed and, and measurements and that type of thing. And um, I was really excited because this is a card I've seen, um, oh gosh, many times over the last couple years and I've just never taken time to figure out how to make it. So I was thrilled when this is the one that, that showed up and I've made a couple of them and I'm really excited to be able to share it with you guys tonight too. 
Um, I'm using, it basically features designer series paper. So tonight I am using the Flowering Fields designer series paper. So let me show you the card and a couple of examples. And then um, we will get to making them. So it's called the um, Bay Window Fold. And it works great with the designer series paper that is actually uh, a scenery type paper because you kind of want it to carry through. And then you can get a feel for why it's called the um, bay window because as you can see it, it um, folds up just like your front bay window might do on your house. And so you've got a little space to make notes in here and then you've got your card that folds and the best part is it will fold flat and fit into a standard envelope. So this is one using, shockingly, the Horizons Designer Series paper. I absolutely love this. I just ordered another pack of it this afternoon. So here is the bay window. I wish I could have it standing up so you could see it. It does obviously stand up on its own too, which is kind of fun. Um, but here is the card as it's laying down so that you can see kind of how the front of it looks. And then I made another one, actually the same night that we were meeting, using the tulip paper. Um, again, it's the Flowering Fields Designer Series paper. I just love this paper. So there you go, just a simple happy birthday. And on the inside, I stamped the wishing you happiness a special day will bring. Very easy to make, not a lot of supplies are needed, and I will show you that. And then I'm even more excited to show you one that I made on a product that is not available yet, but will be. Um, so I'm not going to share a whole lot with you, but it's an Oceans themed paper, suite of products. And you know how I feel about that. Um, and so I am actually using just a piece of paper from the designer series paper that will be with that. Uh, join me next week and I'll show you a little bit more about this suite because it is absolutely amazing. Um, but the designer series paper that I used is Waves of the Ocean. And so this is just a little bit of a teaser for you. How pretty is this paper? Hmm, look at that. Now for some of you, you may have done the pour art. And that's basically what this paper is based off of. Um, I'll go into a little bit more of that when I share this whole suite with you. Just use Granny Apple Green and Pacific Point are my primary colors in here. And again, happy birthday, wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. So pretty cool card. And again, it'll lay flat so it fits into a regular envelope. So let's get started and I can share with you how to make the card. I'm actually gonna do some of the cutting um, of the designer paper anyhow in front of you. Um, live here so that you can see how it's done. But the first thing we're going to start with is a five and a half. You know what? Um, nuts. <clears throat> I wrote the measurements on the wrong piece of paper. All right, hang on. Not a big deal because I've got them right here. I just had a little piece of post-it note that I thought was going to help me. Next week's card. All right, so you start off with a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. And um, I have already scored mine. And you will be scoring it at three eighths of an inch. And then again at one and seven eighths, which is right here. Again at three and five eighths. And at five and one eighths. And at five and a half. I will post these measurements in the comments down below since I'm not going to be able to share with you the sheet that I've got it on, but I will get that information out for you. Sorry about that. So to start with, you're just going to fold along the score lines. Um, this is the five and a half, so that's how you get your card. And then you are going to be folding, and I always need to look at mine because, you know, this is kind of challenging some days for me. So we're going to start by folding on this end now. That's going to be the front of our card. So we will fold this piece 
back. So that'll be a mountain. And then we are going to fold, actually, this is gonna end up being a valley. I gave you bad information right there. And then we will have a mountain. So valley mountain, another mountain fold. And then this one will also be a valley. So it's valley, mountain, mountain, valley, if that makes sense. And what I'm referring to is the way the folds go. So we've got a V and then the mountain, mountain, and another valley, okay? And then we are going to, to prepare this the rest of the way, take a piece of our tear and tape and you wanna just put it on that little tiny section that we've got here. Because what we're gonna do is just secure it down there and that'll give us one of the folds of our bay window. And I find it's easier if you do it on the narrow strip because then you don't have to worry about it not being quite lined up on this side. And then you're just gonna fold it and that is secured. I'm going to run my bone folder here just to burnish it one more time. Okay, and then the next piece that you need is, oh, Carol, Carol. See, I'm trying to make two cards tonight because I was ready last week and I already had my plan started for this week. We'll look at this one next week. <coughs> the next thing that you need is a piece of basic white, very vanilla, or another coordinating light colored card that can go on the inside. You just want it to be light enough that you can write on it. And this particular piece measures four and an eighth by three and a half. So four and an eighth by three and a half. And that will be the inside of our card. And then the trickiest part of this is the designer series paper. And again, I am using the Flowering Fields designer series paper. And I just wanna show you how to trim this because it makes more sense, at least to me, to have somebody explain it to me rather than try to write it down in a way I hope everybody will understand. So what I am doing is I've got a piece here that measures um, six inches wide and four and an eighth tall. So you want to make sure that if it's um, got a distinct pattern to it, which most of our um, scenery type papers are going to, that you've got the six inches going the long way and not the short way. Otherwise, your windows might look a little funny, the view out your window. All right, so we're going to make our first cut at one and three eighths. And remember with the trimmer, the cutter is the dark blade and that's the one that you wanna use. So we're gonna cut it at one and three eighths. And then you do wanna keep these pieces of paper together and work them, work, move them up as you start the next strip. So the next piece, we wanna have the paper lined up at the three inch mark here, including the strip that you just cut. I hope that makes sense. And we'll slide our cutter. And then you're going to move everything else up again to four and three eighths. And then four and five eighths. So again, just kind of keep the papers lined up. And that gives you this little bitty strip and then the last piece there. So those are your cuts. So basically in this order, you have one piece that measures two and no nope, one and three eighths by four and an eighth you have another piece that measures one and five eighths by four and an eighth the next piece 
Yep, measures one and one, two, three eighths by four and an eighth. This little skinny piece, it measures one quarter of an inch by four and an eighth. And then the last piece measures one and three eighths again by four and one eighth. I'll include those measurements too. All right, so I'm just gonna set these pieces aside in the order that they were cut. And move my trimmer out of the way. And then I am going to take my card. And I, whenever I'm putting designer paper on, I like to keep it as flat as I can. And so this strip here isn't going to have any paper on it at all, the one that we taped down. And it's really optional whether you want to put it on this little strip. I do just because I like the color it adds. So I am going to grab my silicone mat, silicone mat, and my seal, and just lightly run a bead of tape. Now if you get adhesive sticking off on the side, just run your finger along it and kind of fold it to the underside. Then make sure you've checked to see which is going to be up on your card so that when you adhere this, it goes on the right direction. And you're going to have about an eighth of an inch on all the borders. Okay. And then we're just going to come back and take, whoops. So I've used the middle piece of adhesive, or designer series paper here that went here. And now I'm just going to start going from left to right. And so this first piece is going to go here. And again, I'm going to have just small borders. Let me take my adhesive. A little bit of that on and I'm going to center it in this first window pane trying to keep about an eighth of an inch border and again make sure you're putting all of the designer paper on in the same direction and then we'll take that second piece and repeat the process this is really a, a quick easy card um, to prep for and to to make um, as long as you keep your papers in order Okay, and then we'll take that third piece that we cut and we're going to put it in that panel. I just love this. This is um, Mango Melody is the cardstock that I'm using and I just love how it goes with this paper and really makes everything pop. I think with the snowstorm they're predicting tomorrow, it uh, is making me anxious for spring. Although I did read today Four weeks from today is the spring um, equinox. So it's not that far away. We can do this. All right, and then the next step that I'm gonna take is to adhere this last piece. Now on my cards, I, I want this to pop up just a little bit so that this will slide underneath it or actually kind of bump up against it to hold open. And so we're actually going to use dimensionals to secure that in place. And I do have my dimensionals here, so I'm going to flip this over. We want to put them on this side of the paper. Well, we want to put the dimensionals on the back side, but on this half of the paper, because we want this side to be... Um, set up so that this doesn't slide you know that it holds that so actually we will have dimensionals here but not up to the edge because we want it just a little bit under so I'm going to stick on dimensionals I'll show you what I mean and for this I try to put the flat edge facing the outside so that when the card is standing up it'll hit those and not go any further this side I don't really care 
<clears throat> Does anybody else find these hexagonal backs on all sorts of different surfaces in your house? Mine get upstairs. I don't know how. I have found them on Loki's nose before. The cat isn't as big an issue, but he sure is. All right. I don't want you flip-flopping on me here, so I'm just bend that back a little bit. So I'm going to stick this again, keeping in line with the 1 8 inch borders. I'm going to set that on. And now you can see how that'll just butt up there and not go too far in. Okay? And then we are going to take this piece of basic white cardstock. Um, because of the the greeting that I'm using, I am choosing not to put anything on the inside of my card because the whole purpose of this card is to send a letter. So I don't want to have a greeting on the inside too. So this piece I am just going to um, adhere on the inside. And again, it measures three and a half inches by four and an eighth. So we'll just stick a little seal on the back of that. And I'm going to center it in this space that I've got here, leaving just a little bit more of a gap right there. Okay, and so that finishes up the body of my card. Isn't that cool, the way that... Now, see, it got mad at me because I kind of bent that one when it was flip-flopping in the way. All right, so we'll go this way. Kind of cool how that just tucks in and forms that window shape. Just really like that. And this paper is so pretty. And it even looks good when it's laying flat. So today I'm doing something a little bit different with my greeting too. Um, my greeting is coming from the Flowing Flowers stamp set. <clears throat> which is in the mini catalog. And I am using this greeting called Sending a Card Instead of a Text. Um, one of my goals for the New Year is to send out more cards. I tend to text a lot because it's quick, it's, it's efficient, but it sometimes lacks the personal touch. And so I thought this greeting was perfect to send to somebody um, sending a card instead of a text. And so that's what I'm doing. Now to create my image, I've already stamped it. I used a fun shape. And this is from the layering diorama dies. And I have not really shown you these. I've had them, but I have not shown them to you. Um, they are on page 163 of the annual catalog, and they're just fun little shapes that layer super nicely and create cool images. This is the second smallest one. Um, I thought the greeting fit in there really well, and I just took a sponge dauber and did the edge first in Mango Melody, and then I took my Poppy Parade and I dipped the dauber in that and spent a little bit more time not only doing just the very edge but also brushing in a little bit so that it popped out just a teeny bit. And this I am just going to pop up with a couple dimensionals. And um, I want, just I goofed the first time I stamped it, good thing we have two sides. I just didn't like, actually, I think my, I don't remember why that, oh, I think the die didn't end up fitting there is why I had to flip it over. So I am going to just kind of put, keep them in the center so that I have a little flexibility on my actual placement. It is not uncommon for me to have to use the back side of my paper, especially when I'm stamping greetings. And I'm just going to put that in the middle panel. And so that'll be there when it goes up. And I do want to add just a little bit of um, pop with a ribbon. This is the, oh, I'm almost out of this. Yikes, this has been one of my favorite ribbons. This comes as part of a trio of ribbon. I wish we could get it separately because I go through a lot of that. But I can't. So, it's part of the flowers for every season. Um, you've seen me use this 
gingham ribbon too. I haven't used as much of the twine, but um, this is great. It's just a basic white ribbon and it makes really cute bows. So that's what I'm gonna go for today. So we will just take this and I'm not even tying a bow bow. I'm just gonna do a knot bow. I don't know what they're called. I'm gonna call it a knot bow. I try to flip it around so that my front pieces will look fairly similar to get a little bit of bunching in them. Okay, and then, because you can't use your seam scissors you used on your ribbon that you use on your paper, I am going to grab those these scissors. I'm just going to shorten up. And I like to trim at a, just a slight bit of an angle um, because it does help with fraying. And usually I end up going back and forth a little bit in order to get it even, which I'm going to have to do here. But I'll get it this time. All right, I think we got that. <clears throat> and then I am just going to use... A glue dot and these are just leftovers I had for my paper pumpkin I've got a roll but in typical Carol fashion I don't know where it is on my desk right now not gonna worry about it and I think I'm gonna put this in the center here so I'm just gonna put a glue dot up here and sometimes I like to kind of have two just to secure my bow pick off I don't want to take everything off just the light yep all right get rid of that get rid of that and then I can put my bow in the middle here and we should be good to go the only thing I'm thinking I want a little sparkle here and this is just not gonna be a wink of Stella kind of sparkle so let's see what kind of gem we can um I've got a bunch of different rhinestones in my container here. Maybe you know what? I think I'm going to use these are the holiday stone jewel holiday rhinestone basic jewels. I think I'm actually going to pull this gold because I think it's going to grab. And I'm going to just put some right onto my diorama. Just to make it pop a little bit. There are three different sizes of stones. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. It is, you know, maybe it's just two different sizes. I think it's just two different sizes. I didn't look that up ahead of time because I wasn't planning to do this initially. So there, now we've got a little bit of bling on our card too. So sending a card instead of a text with this bright and shiny flourishing flowers, flourishing flowering fields designer series paper, tongue twister there. And um, just a, a cool, cool fold that you can make with the window card. I need to figure out exactly where I want to put my um, dimensionals. I'm still working on that for that inside piece to make sure that it gets there correctly. But I think you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. So just with a little bit of change of paper, you get some pretty fun cards here. Nope, I have one more, don't I? I do. I have a tulip one. Oh, it fell on the floor. Phew. All right. And here's the lovely tulip one. Pretty cool, I think. So, there you go. Your Monday Make It Monday. We will see you guys next week. Um, I have a card planned. It just depends if I get going with that ocean 
suite that I was telling you about, I may share a little bit more of that because you will be able to order that starting very soon. Um, the other thing I will ask you to do is keep an eye out on my Facebook page here. You're welcome, April. Thanks for watching. I am going to be doing a Zoom class, and it's going to be more of a home decor piece um, type class. We've got this very cool ma magnetic board kit that has come out, and so I will be getting some information out for that, too. Um, and it will be done via Zoom. Um, and I will have details all out there. Thanks for watching, Pam. Thanks for watching, Anne. I appreciate it. Um, so watch for some details on that. But it might be a way for us just to interact a little bit more doing it via Zoom. It would be really fun to have a chance to chat with people again. So here you go. If you make this card, please be sure to post it, a picture of it. I would love to see what you guys create. Um, we had even people that use some of the same paper, the cards ended up looking different. And so I would love to see what it is that you're able to create too, because I know you'll come up with some beautiful things. So just be sure to post a picture in the comments below. Take care, everyone, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.